Let's get it. It is an absolutely wonderful day here in the Carolinas. And I'm so glad to see it. I do hope everyone is well as always. And that you too are able to get out and enjoy this beautiful day that the Most High has made and given us to rejoice in and be glad. And those are some very important words. Because as I study that text, the Most High began to point it out to me that that is a command we shall rejoice and be glad. That means we're going to do it. And that is if you are truly excited to see it and you're glad. And that takes us right into our thought for today. But first, let me say I do hope everyone is well, like we say in the beginning, and that you are able to get out and enjoy this beautiful day, getting in some fresh air, some sunshine, and most high willing some exercise. Getting that heart rate up to a, or should I say getting that heart rate up at least an hour out of the 24 that we're blessed to see. Okay, and I, like I said, my thought is basically a very serious one. Simple and serious. And it is, are you trusting or complaining? Are you trusting or complaining? And this is still under our main thought for the week. Occupy until I come. Occupy until I come. And this thought is coming from the idea of Moses and Aaron, but Moses and the Most High, along with Aaron, leading the people out of Egypt into the wilderness. And they're starting to become, started to become some complaining going on. <laughs> what should I say? Some complaining started going on. And, um, most I had to make a distinction between his people and the complainers. And we do know that our script is coming out of Luke 19 and 13 once again. We're going to stay on this idea for the week. Just like last week we was on the idea of maintain until I come. This week the Most High has really been impressing into my Ruach to occupy until I come. And we looked up the words occupy on yesterday and saw what they meant. And it means to stand in a place where you have been positioned on the most part. And as we saw here in Luke 19 and 13, the most, the word says, and he called his 10 servants and delivered to them 10 pounds of silver and said unto them, Occupy until I come. And basically we saw in that script that he called them together and gave them 10 pounds of silver. He dis dis distributed amongst, amongst the men. And I'm not gonna say just three because it, it just gives us an account that he called back three of them that he had given some of the silver to and all of them gave a report. And one of them he called a wicked servant because he didn't come back with more than he was given. He just brought back the one pound or piece of silver that he was given. And this is a parable, but it was a parable of Yahushua showing his people what was going to happen in the future because they was he was going into Jerusalem. And I'm sure the Ruach Hakadosh, Hakadosh laid on his heart that they was gonna try to make him king then on his, on his way in. But he, he gave him that parable to let him know the kingdom is not coming this way right now. But it's happening now in our time. And like 
like I was saying, we was going into this idea for today in the same vein of Occupy Until I Come. And we're looking at our ancestors, the children of Israel, as they came out of Egypt. Let's, let's give this story a little background. We see that they just came out of Egypt with the Most High bringing them out by a great arm, as he said, and bringing them through the wilderness. That is basically saying is that he showed miracles, signs, and wonders. He basically beat up the Egyptians and gave them their stuff, period. And the Egyptians didn't like it. At first they gave up and said, go and get away from him. But I'm sure after they sat around and started thinking about it, they was like, well, these jokers done took all our stuff too. Plus we don't have nobody to work our fields no more. Mm, sounds familiar? So we gotta do something about this. We can't just let our, our servants get gone. Who's gonna work the fields for us? Who's gonna fan these flies off us when we sitting out on our porch with our mint juleps? Oh boy. So as the story goes, the Most High delivered them out of Egypt. However, like I said, they came out them as they was crossing over the Red Sea, or some would call it the Reed Sea, but they was crossing over a body of water. And the text says the Red Sea, so we'll go with that today. And like I said, the Egyptians weren't satisfied. They started coming out them, said, we need our peoples back. We need our, like I heard a fellow say, our, um, our lot in life. We was allotted these slaves and we're gonna hold on to them because they're, they're, our, they're our money. They're our um, get by. They're all that we have. And for many generations, they're all that they have known to do the work. So this is a generation, as I heard another ox say, that was built by weak men. One generation was strong because they didn't have all the luxuries. And then they had children that were not so strong who enjoyed some of the luxuries. And then they had children which were weak because all they knew was luxury and no cares. And this is how Egypt had grown. And this is how the nations of the world has grown with our people doing the work. So the Most High has come to a point where he's saying enough, but at the same time, we must occupy and keep doing the work that he's called each and, one, each and every one of us to do while we're here. And pardon me, I'm keeping an eye on my surroundings. There's a lot of activity going on over here to my left. But we have to um, do the work that he's called us to do in this short window of time. That he, just like he told me, there's a small window of time to do this work, which was yesterday start or the day before start. He said, occupy until I come. There's a small window of time. And basically we know what that means. It means there's a small opportunity or a small window of time for an opportunity to do what I ask you to do. But yeah, we see now that here comes the Egyptians, right on their tail. And I heard a fellow ask this question last evening about how could the Most High blame Egypt for something he hardened their heart to do. And basically he was saying that since the Most High hardened Pharaoh's heart not to let the people go, why would he destroy them and um, blame them for not letting them go? And I, I want to reply back to his question, but I said, there was too many other people replying back to his question. 
So I said I stay out of it. I don't like getting into the replies and the if somebody replied to my post then I'll thank them and let it go. But I don't like really getting into the debates. Cause nine times out of ten they're coming for your faith anyway. They're coming to debate you and to try to get you off your spot. But the simple answer is they have been, had enslaved the Most High's people and had put them through the ranger. Especially in the last few years. They was making them do work without straw. They had to go out and gather their own straw. So they had become taskmasters. So they had to pay for it. And it's the same, same cases we're in today. Our taskmasters have put on more and more as the years have gone by. For 2,000 years, we have been chased around the world because we're the Most High's chosen people. We have been hunted down, stacked in ships, sent thousands of miles away to a land that we don't know. Just like the text said, we will be in a stranger's, in a strange land and enslaved by folks that we don't know. And this has been the case, and this has been the case that we're the only people in history that have been have been that have been sent out into bondage by ships and becoming strangers in a land that we have not known. But that that's the reason why, because the Most High has to follow up with His laws. He said, "You reap what you sow." So if you have destroyed the people, you got to be destroyed. And if you have enslaved the people, you have to go into slavery like the text says. But old Pharaoh and his boys came on out and they said, we're going to um, go back and get our people. We're going to kill a whole lot of them or the mighty men of them. This is in my own mind. Just to let them know that this is going to happen if you try this move again. Like they always do, they say we're going to take out a few of the strong men. Like in slavery, they would take and rape the men in front of all the other people to break them. They call it butt breaking. Buck breaking, not just butt breaking. But they're saying that we're going to uh, make an example out of you. We're going to take your power by raping you in front of the other people. But all praises to the most high, that time has come and gone. And we see that they came out and they were swallowed up by the Red Sea. However, the story goes on that they went on out into the wilderness and began to complain. We're thirsty, we're hungry. We want some of them onions, some of them leeks that we had when we was back in Egypt. So the Most High wanted to take them all out once again. But Moses, as always, was there intervening for him. And he said, what would all the nations of the earth think that after you had delivered them out of the house of bondage, that you would take them out into the wilderness and kill them? So the Most High said, okay, you're right, Moses. Because I was planning on killing them all and starting a new nation under your name. But our idea today comes from a situation Moses had with one of the mighty men, one of the great leaders in Israel at that time, I guess you would say, Korah. And Korah had gotten people behind him and on his side to basically buck, buck against Moses or to cause, cause a mutiny. And trying to overturn Moses saying that why should he have all the power who called you to be the leader <laughs> and see that was a, a big mistake because he wasn't bucking against Moses he was basically bucking against the most high and they want to 
to get a a, del, a dealership, not a dealership, but a, um, a delegation together to go back to Israel. They want to get a group of people that was willing to go back into slavery with them. So this is my idea and thought for today. Are you complaining about the leader the most I put in your life? In a lot of cases, a lot of us just have the Ruach HaKadosh as our leader because we're not fellowshipping with other ministries or assemblies or churches. And that's the case for a lot of us. Thank the most high, we, we do have the opportunity to fellowship with different people. As myself, we fellowship online, my wife and I, we fellowship online with a, a group of people in an assembly called Biblical Hebrew Awakening. <clears throat> and it's a great format or opportunity that we have a live Zoom call, Zoom call and it's on live so you can watch on YouTube very Saturday around 5 o'clock 5.30 Eastern Standard Time well, yeah are you complaining and basically it's not really about the assembly that you're attending or the people you're fellowshipping with it's all about your relationship with the Most High and what He's called you to do. Are you bucking against Him? That's the most important question. Are you denying Him His right to be the Elohim of your life or the God of your life? The head of your life. Pardon me. And see, that's what something me and my wife, we stood on in the beginning of our relationship and has stood on throughout our 22 odd years of marriage. And that's always to keep the most high first, keep each other first, and keep love first. And that's the secret. That's why we work. And that's why our relationship with the Most High works. We keep Him first. And this has to be our heart's cry today. Abba, whatever you say I do, I keep you first. I dare not move without you. I dare not breathe without you. Because in you is where I find my being. But that story goes on also just like with old Pharaoh's story. Korah and his people were destroyed for bucking up against the Most High system. <clears throat> and I say system, but you can break it down. When you're bucking against the system, you're really bucking against the Most High. You're saying, I'm not going to do what you say I should do. I don't want to hear it. I'm going to be my own independent individual. <clears throat> and see, this is... A lot of our problems, we want to be independent. From the Most High, we like, what was that saying he, he told me? We want the independence until we need his provisions. Then we want to be dependent on him. Sad song. And see, I thought about that. Those folks that were complaining about Moses and his leadership, they weren't complaining when it was time to go. They weren't complaining at the Red Sea when the waters swallowed up Pharaoh and his people. That's just like I heard this fellow teaching and preaching about you're sucking up all the most highs, good clean air, eating up all his food, driving his car, staying in his house, but you stayed complaining about how he want to do his business, how he want to handle his business, or how he calls you 
to handle his business. And the lack thereof of you following him saying, I will do your, your bid, your work. Your desire is my desire. But all praises to the Most High, we have to really make up in our mind who we're going to serve, just like Joshua at, to ask his people, or he made a statement to his people. He said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Most High. So we have to make up in our mind today that that's who we're going to serve. And as I thought of yesterday, is we're going to walk the talk, not just, we're going to walk the walk, not just talk the talk. And see, a lot of us can't get past step one, and that's talking the talk. See, we got to get that. My mama said it all the time. Get that, um... nasty talk out of our mind. Basically, that's what she would she be saying. Get that nasty talk out of your mind for that negative talk. You're talking against the Most High's word. And that's not going to um, bring you life. See, the, the Husha said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So he's the word of the Most High. Like the text said, he was with him in the beginning and it wasn't anything created apart from the word of the Most High. Which when the Most High spoke that word, things came into being. And see, that's how we have to be. We have to speak the Most High's word behind him and believe on it. Basically saying, I'm going to believe what you say, not what I see. I'm going to believe what you say and not what I hear. And I'm not going to complain about my situation. Because my situation is going to change. It's just like when a woman has a baby. She has birth pains. Matter of fact, back up the story. She has relations with a man. And his seed is implanted into her womb. And life begins. And as that seed grows, that woman feels that seed growing on inside of her. But that doesn't mean it's time to give birth to it. As the months go by, that seed begins to grow. And at six months, it doesn't mean it's time for the baby to be delivered. However, at the ninth month, she starts feeling more pain than ever. Not only from the swelling of her body, but she starts feeling labor pains, as they call it. And... That doesn't mean that it's time for the baby to be born just because she's feeling those labor pains. However, right there at the end of them labor pains, something breaks on the inside of her and they call that the water breaking. And once that water breaking, it means it's about that time, but it don't mean that the, the baby comes right out after that. There's gotta be some pushing, which the way I see it, and from my experience, that's the time for us to fast and pray and study. Push that plate away and jump on them knees a little more. And have our ears totally open to the Most High's voice. Because it's time to deliver. It's time for that baby to be born. So that's my word of encouragement today. Great thought. Great thought. Are you trusting or complaining? And don't be like Corey and them folks. I didn't say it, but they got swallowed up by the earth straight into hell. Straight into hell. And old Pharaoh got swallowed up by the ocean. So it lets us see this, this mental image that we should keep in our minds. The hell and high water that the enemy is trying to bring to us, our enemies are gonna to succumb to it and be swallowed up by it. The text says that when we go through the water and through the fire, we won't, we won't drown, 
nor will we be, be burnt. And see, that's all the hell and hot water we go through daily. But it's a purpose to it. But as always, I love y'all. Stay up and keep pushing forward in the right direction. Shalom.